Hi, I am Monica Brandt, one of the world's first true fitness pioneers starting back in 1991. I helped launch the fitness industry while traveling internationally, meeting fans worldwide to share my style of fitness to the bodybuilding community. After a decade of fitness competitions, I earned one of the world's most prestigious titles, the IFBB Fitness Olympia Championships. Moving into the new millennium, I was the first IFBB Fitness Olympia athlete to transition into the new professional figure division and compete for close to another 20 years. After 15 years as an IFBB professional, I tried another organization and won the WBFF World Pro Figure Championships both 2010 and 2013. I am a true athlete and made my way into racing into the Masters USATF Sprint events, placing top three at the World's Masters track meet in all three events, the 100, 200, and 400 meter races. Besides athletics, I have been honored with over 100 magazine covers, both nationally and internationally. Since it's always a blessing to share with others, over the last 15 years, I've hosted women's fitness events and worked with clients, helping them discover how to live radiantly in all areas of life, body, mind, soul, and spirit. The Monica Brandt Show is one of the ways I am honoring the legendary athletes, powerhouse individuals, and nutrition gurus that have laid a strong foundation in the past, help keep the current industry flowing, and offer inspiration to the next generations. show of the Monica Brandt show. I am Monica Brandt and I have a beautiful friend and IFBB competitor, Wendy Fortino. Hello, Wendy. You're my co-host tonight. Yay. So good to be here. Yes. Excited. Excited. I'm so excited to get to talk to our special guest. What about you? Oh my gosh. I cannot wait. I can't wait for everyone to hear all the awesome things he has to say. He's Oh, I gave away the gender. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. All right, guys. Well, when you're joining us, please let us know where you are coming in from. Mo for president. All right. I don't know if I want that job. <laughs> Ooh, that's a lot. <laughs> but I appreciate uh, the um, vote of confidence and a good evening to everybody. Yes, please. If you're watching, uh, let us know where you're tuning in from. It's so nice to have you guys. I know there's a lot of other things you could be doing on Tuesday night. So thank you for joining us. And I am going to just take it away and introduce our next, our special guest tonight. Our special guest, one of the most consistently lean and symmetrical bodybuilders of all time. Um, he is, I think consistent is his middle name. He is an influencer and an ambassador for the bodybuilding community. In fact, he's really, uh, he's very highly sought after for his education in nutrition and supplementation, training, posing, 
pretty much everything that anybody needs to know. He has a good, uh, good su- advice and suggestions for people. He's coaching people. I think he's an animal. Uh, I don't want to say the word lover, but I think that's what he is. <laughs> he is besides all of these things. This guy is the number one first ever classic Mr. Olympia champion. How exciting is that to be the first of anything in this industry is really, really rewarding. And so he's not only all of those awesome things, but he's also a husband and he and his wife are very, very dear and adorable. And I can't wait to get everyone to get to know and hear from Mr. Danny Hester. Let's bring him in, Kona. Tony Doherty here for NBC News Online with the first ever Classic Physique Division Olympia winner, Danny Hester. Danny, you've just made history. You won the first show of the year, being the first ever Classic Physique show, made history then, then you've come back here and won the Mr. Olympia. How are you feeling? I feel great. I feel it's amazing. Yeah, I always knew I had the potential to do it. I'm just blessed that I had the mindset to do it now, you know, to, to fall off the road work hard. Exciting. Danny, move to your left just a hair. There, he, there we are. There he is, the full Danny. <laughs> so good to see All you right. tonight, Danny. Thanks for taking time to come in and join us here on the Monica Brandt Show. How are you tonight? Good. Thank you for having me. Um, he's trying to get adjusted. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. It's, a, it's actually everything's backwards. You yes. think I get it easily because I'm dyslexic. <laughs> now you can see what your what your face looks like the opposite that? way that you you're there you are face. perfect that's perfect delay, delay, huh? <laughs> we have some a lot of viewers coming in and saying hello we had somebody from Honduras it looks like hi Louis is it Louis Louis and you guys I'm sorry my uh, vision's a little bit blurry sometimes so Wendy if you see anybody I'm missing yeah. looks like Alabama's in the house hello. Victor, thanks for joining us again. Victor's been with us quite a few times. It's nice to see everybody. Victor, Max, Quitman. Quitman. What up, Danny? (laughs) Awesome. What is this one down at the bottom saying, Wendy Quitman? I was there last year cheering on my cousin Brandon Curry, but Danny has a great presentation on stage. Oh, no way. <laughs> that's so fun. That's awesome. Well, that's cool. Hey, Brandon Curry's going to be on um, in a few couple months. So that'll be fun, too. But, but Danny, back to you. How, is your, uh, how are you, yep, how are you yeah, doing today, yeah, Danny? I definitely have to tune in to Brandon. He's such a such a good guy. You know, I, I got flown out there last month with him um, to the new uh, Olympia owner uh, and headquarters for the Olympia in Arizona and uh, they did a profile on both of us and it was just nice to spend time with him um, out there in Arizona. You know, I've always just followed him on the social media and seeing what he does with the kids and stuff after he won the Olympia, you know, he takes his trophy around and shows it to the kids and just mm. really is such a great ambassador for the sport. And, and that's, to me, that's the most important thing, you know, is to do something with the platform you've been given mm. and uh, just to give it back, like what you're doing, Monica. You know, that's why I'm so honored and and happy to be on here and, you know, uh, see if I can offer something to everyone else also. Well, thank you. You you hit the nail nail on the head. Yes, exactly why I wanted to do these shows is not I mean, besides the fact that I really wanted to catch up with the people that I've known for years and see how everybody's doing. And I thought, what? Why not just make it a fun show that everyone can tune in and, and learn about these amazing people that I've known for years. And, you know, Danny, you and I go way back to the 90s. I mean, do you remember so this? Not 1990s. This is 1996. Wow. 
That's awesome. I mean, and it's, I've had it up and on my wall still here. The same. I, I we love still the look the same. I Danny's remember, bigger, though. I, I, Danny I is remember, a little bit uh, bigger, yeah. Danny got bigger. Uh, <laughs> Bill, Bill Phelps is like, is Monica taller than you? I'm like, I don't know, but that the the beach there's a kind of a slant hill, so I'll pick the the slanted <laughs> part. <laughs> so in the magazine, Blame it on the slant. I was like, wow, that that hill was a lot more slanted than I thought. I'm like, how tall are I you? I was like six foot, five six. You're five six. I'm five four. So I oh. think what they did is they had me kind of down in the sand and they yeah, put and, you in shoes. And, and the sand and, does. Yeah. I, I piled up and I, I condensed my sand so it's nice and hard. <laughs> I have you guys both feet. I'm five feet even. So you're five foot even, yeah. Wendy? Even. Ah, uh, I didn't realize that. I'm sure. <laughs> you probably see, told me that on your is, is if you're if you're proportion and balance as far as your symmetry and everything, it's hard. Like it's it's unless you put me with like a tall girl, then you could tell, you know, my height. But a lot of times people can't especially when I'm by myself. And, uh, you know, that's what helps with uh, a lot of photo shoots and stuff. And it's just about staying balanced because a lot of big guys can actually look short in pictures mm -hmm. because they're not balanced. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, so I want to, you know, and I, I think we all kind of fall into the same category. People always think we're bigger than what we are. Um, there's, you know, cause in the picture they can shoot it where your legs look super long and muscle always looks bigger. And then they see you, especially when you're lean for a show and people are like, wow, yeah. you're so much smaller than I thought you would be. So that's, yeah. that's, but, I um, get that a lot. The guys who come on the East coast to Gold's Venice and train, get ready for a show. And then I see them across the room staring at me and I could see their mouths moving and says, yeah. is that Dan Hester? Wow, he's <laughs> kind of small. <laughs> I said, all right but wait till we get on stage then you'll see how it works right yeah right because then the the personality and the aura and everything exudes and you always end up to look a lot bigger than really the way you are depending on your posing yeah. but before we get into all of that danny i want to just talk to you a little bit about um well first of all what's happening with you and l you're in la Right. And yeah. which, what part of LA are you in the Marina or are you in a different area? Uh, Sherman, Sherman Oaks. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So but how I, is I've lived all over Venice, you know, um, the Marina just on speedway out in Santa Monica, mm -hmm. just, you know, cause I'm originally, my mom lives in Ventura County, um, by the beach, you know, between Malibu and Santa Barbara. Okay. So it's a Ventura County is a beach town. It's very similar to Venice. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, the weather's a little bit nicer because it's about five degrees cooler all the time than in, in Santa Monica and less traffic. Okay. So you, you were, um, you've been raised, I guess, in California then? Yeah, my, uh, I was born in Thailand. I moved here about when I was two years old um, to California in Ventura County. And uh, my father worked for the CIA. And uh, during the Vietnam War, you know, it's where he met my mom, my my father is Cherokee, and um, my mom is uh, from Thailand. And uh, my grandpa, which I never really met, um, my mom's dad was the police chief of Bangkok. So during wow. that time, the CIA worked a lot with you know in in Thailand, and uh, and that's how they met. And he actually died during the war for our country. And uh, so my mom had six kids. And uh, luckily, he did really well in real estate and stuff, invested his money. So we had properties out here. Um, he owned a, a car apartment complex. And uh, we all moved back out here because my grandmother, his mom, was here. And so she helped, too. And uh, so that's where we ended up in Ventura County. Wow. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So before we go on, I'm really bad at this because I get talking to people and then I forget that we've got, I've got to give my questions out for the viewers to win something, right? I'm already trying to research a new trivia well, question because they gave one of the answers. Away. I know, right? Well, we didn't even, and we didn't, I didn't even do the questions yet. So I want to just quickly interrupt you um, because we have to give some love to our sponsors. And I just want to say thank you to our sponsors in advance. Um, and two of our sponsors tonight have giveaways for people. So how this works is it has to be a USA viewer. So apologize if anyone's joining from another country. But um, we have two questions and 
uh, Wendy, we're just going to go with the other question that you had come up. So Danny was a professional in what other industry before bodybuilding? Danny's like, I was? What was that? Um, right? You found that on online, right? Uh, actually, I don't know if people can find this online because uh, Danny told me himself. And I'm okay, not sure if it's so if you're a Danny fan and yeah. follower, you may know that Danny has a different profession prior to bodybuilding, which he incorporates, I'm assuming, on stage in bodybuilding. That's a good so idea. Give him a little hint. Yeah, yeah. so we're going to go with that for one of the giveaways, and that will be for the um, Egg White International giveaway. And for Legendary Foods, what year was did Dan, excuse me, what year did Danny win the first ever classic Mr. Olympia? And uh, Danny, you have your medal there, right? That you just came back from the gym wearing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's like, yeah, like all serious. Yep, just took it off from the gym. Yeah, Woo Train at the gym with the gold Olympia medal, you know, no yeah. big. Yeah, I had to wear huge. it doing his burpees or something. You just flip it on your back and you can do burpees. That's pretty cool, That's, Danny. Uh, <laughs> Joe Weider and uh, don't say the year. Daughter. Don't say the year. Don't say oh, the do. year. Okay, I'm so you guys, the, the metal. Yeah, good. Whoever comes up with the two answers or one answer, excuse me, first, uh, Legendary Foods is what year did Danny win the Mister Classic first ever Mister Olympia, and what profession was Danny in prior to bodybuilding that he uses for bodybuilding on stage? Ready, set, go. Whoever gets the answers first in the comments wins those two prizes you have to be usa because we have to ship to you and right now we can't ship anywhere else so back to danny 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 talk to us about your your childhood i want to know what was little danny like what did you do and you know kind of how did you lead into 1989 i believe your first competition which is so cool because i was 1991 baby and it's so fun to talk to people who've been in this for so many years so I want to hear what, what did the little young Danny, what was he into? What was he like? Well, some people would still say I'm the little young Danny. <laughs> well, you still look young. So we'll go with that. Okay. <laughs> um, I was, you know, I was, uh, I was a good kid. I think not, <laughs> not having a, a, a father, um, you know, my father around, I think uh, my mom really knew instinctively that we needed some type of mentorship um because she was busy working and stuff and uh i think sports she knew we would kind of get some some of that from it mm -hmm. and she was right you know because we always had coaches and so we always had kind of a, a you know a male figure to kind of try to impress and to have the set goals for us for certain things and have discipline and i think that's very important to have um and you know i i, I think just sometimes I see growing up, you know, I grew up in a, in a pretty decent neighborhood, you know, it wasn't too dangerous, but some of the, the guys I, I kind of rolled with um, used to get in a lot of trouble. Um, so I used to see it kind of stemmed a lot from, you know, mostly the, the parenting mm -hmm. and uh, just the way my, my mother was because she was Asian. So she was very strict, you know. Um, her mother died when she was seven years old, so she was raised by pretty much, you know, a, a police chief. Um, so she got a lot of male, like, strength in a way um, mm -hmm. from that. So it kind of balances it out because she's a woman. And then so when it came to raising us, you know, she kind of had a little bit of both um, advantage yeah. in, that, in that part. And uh, so I was more scared of her being disappointed and pissed at us uh, more so than like the, the, you know, the peer pressure of, of my friends. And yes. uh, so, you know, getting in fights and stuff, uh, it was, it was for, for me, it was uh, about the family, you know, cause our family kind of had to be together, you know, cause we didn't have a, my father and uh you know my mother was from a different country um didn't speak you know english real well she she understood it more than she spoke and that sometimes that's that was an advantage for her because you know sometimes people thought she didn't but she caught everything you know? <laughs> and um and so you know so that made us just be a little bit more um mindful of getting in trouble and and staying on the right path and, you know, for a lot of reasons, too, you know, didn't want to dishonor my father. Um, 
and uh, just excelling in sports definitely kept us out of trouble because it gave us it gave us a goal. It gave us uh, some discipline, you know, which I still look for to this day um, to help me mm-hmm. through just, you know, accomplishing things for everything in my life, too. And that's one of the reasons I keep competing. It just sets a whole another level of discipline and focus in my life that, you know, helps with everything else that's going on. I have a question really fast. You know, people always wonder how much of what the way people operate is nature versus nurture. So for you, it sounds like you had kind of a strict upbringing, but you're so self-motivated. How much of your, the way you are, do you think is a product of your nature versus nurture? Um, I think the nature, I think we were all pretty good, good natured, you know, as far as like giving. Yeah. Um, I've, I've always felt that even for my brothers and sisters too. Um, and in, in, in a lot of ways, they, they call Thailand the land of smiles. Aww. Um, and, uh, you know, I went there only once before a few years back, I got invited, um, with a good friend of mine, Apollo Ono, the Olympia speed skater. Mm-hmm. Um, he was going there on some business and they, they were paying for everything. So he invited me. Um, it was, it was, you know, it was actually literally a year maybe before my, my uh my wedding so he said it was kind of like my my wedding gift to a certain degree and mm-hmm. so i got to go there in like five other uh, asian countries mm-hmm. um it was it was awesome i got the last day to spend um seeing the 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 country you know and the people because the other you know two or three days we were there it was like with very wealthy people so we were going to like five restaurants yeah. and Louis Vuitton stores I was like bro we could be in Vegas right now I <laughs> we need to have a winner guys. we you have know, a winner and, and I don't want to interrupt you but we have a winner you guys wait Wendy uh-huh. wait we we did it at the end of the show they have to wait till the end of the show oh uh, okay okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> exciting I know right hey if, just if, keep if I keep... know the person that wins uh, we're splitting whatever you're getting buddy <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah that's awesome you know what Dan I could probably get some get some goodies sent to you anyways but um <laughs> so oh. Wendy yeah just hold on to everyone that way everyone has to wait till the end of the show I mean if we told them now and then they'd be like well you know mm, uh <laughs> so so yeah, that so, so you were so, in... so I went there I got to see you know I, I just did the last day and I got to see some of the uh you know the the people and and everything that you know my mom came from and it was it was really cool it was really nice i could see the the people are very giving and um they're 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 definitely um perfectionist to a certain degree with with what limited stuff they have i mean i've never and i now i know where i kind of get that from because my mom didn't have like a lot of tools and stuff you know because she was, she was a woman, and she didn't know, like, the correct tools to have in a toolbox. So we were, like, forced to do so many things with, like, incorrect tools, but we got stuff done. <laughs> I mean, we're it. fixing things with spoons and butter knives <laughs> and stuff, you know. She didn't want to go out and buy, you know, the things we needed. Well, it was like I watched my, my neighbors and my friends. They're, like, mowing the lawn or trimming the edge of the lawn with, like, the correct stuff. And I'm like, oh, gosh, <laughs> if I had that... You know, but <laughs> well, when there I was in Thailand. I saw them building buildings and like just doing crazy stuff with like not the correct tools, but they were getting it done. I was like, oh my gosh, now I know where I get it from. Well, your your mom had what six? There were six of you or yeah, seven of six. you? No, so, it was uh, five. Me and five. Yeah. So had, there's six uh, two kids to feed. Three sisters. So What's six. Up? If there's six children to feed, you have yes. to be sparing with your money and where you put your money, like. Yeah. Your mom was your mom had to be very smart and especially coming to a different country and, and trying to make things work. Like yeah. she sounds very intelligent and wise. Yeah. And it sounds like you know what I really love, Danny. I loved what you said. And I think it's so important because uh, I'm a, 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 a woman of faith. And my my view is that the Ten Commandments still fall in play, and it says honor your mother and your father. And in the Bible, it says if you honor your parents, you will have long life that your bones will be healthy. So here you are talking about, you know, fear of your mother far outweighed the fear of your peers, um, yeah. you know, and, criticizing and was, you. Was, and I just, a, so it awesome. Fear, it was a fear of disappointing her, well, not necessarily the fear of, of, you know, getting in trouble or having well, so, to get punished. So, the, so the word fear in biblical is a reverence and a love. And it's the same fear that we're to have for God. 
it's not about God getting us in trouble or getting, but it's about whether we let him down or not. And that that's the fear that yeah. I'm talking about. And I think that's the fear that you're talking about. It incorporates yeah. love, honor, respect. You don't want to let her down. You want her to be proud of you. And I just think that's so important for people to hear that because I think there's a lack of that in, in a lot of kids today. And the parents have lost how to, how to make that yeah. happen for their kids. Cause if your kids, if the, your parents have to teach your kids how to feel that way. You know, it, yeah, it doesn't just yeah. sound natural. It's like you have to. I, I think so. And they, 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 they watch kids, no matter how the young they are, they really watch, you know, people, they think they don't until they get a certain age, but they're walk, watching mm -hmm. very young. Um, I, I remember a lot of stuff when I was very young. I remember how much more I knew than the adults when I was young. That's, <laughs> that's what I, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay. But, so, uh, so speak, speaking of young. Go ahead. Speaking of young, you know what, Wendy, I think what we'll do is we will go ahead and with the answer, because I think I know which one you're talking about, right? You're talking about the uh, what profession was Danny in previous to bodybuilding. So somebody got that right. So let's go ahead and because that is part of Danny's past, which I think would be really fun to talk about. So yeah. let's let's bring that up. You want to announce the winner for that particular yeah. one, and then we'll wait on the other one for later uh, in the show. So if you want to announce the winner, Wendy. Yes. All right. Andy Lugo is the winner. He guessed that Danny was a no, professional dancer. And so um, we're not going to get into specifics. We'll let Danny get yeah. into specifics on the details on that. Yeah, because I think that's cool. Andy, if you could please email info at monicabrant.com, your shipping address, and I will need your phone number because they use, I think they use FedEx to ship. And you are the winner, winner, chicken dinner. You're getting some egg white international. Yeah, tonight. Andy. Ah! All Andy, right. So, go. Okay. <laughs> all right. So, so Danny, talk to us about this um, dancing background. And I mean, yeah. that's pretty interesting. I want to hear about that. Well, yeah, that was when I was younger. I, mean, I guess you can consider that was like my first job, you know. Um, it was when I was like 12 or 13 years old. And, you know, my generation was when breakdancing first kind of came to be. Uh, in the media, that is, you know, it was always in the inner city and it was always evolving. But the uh, breakdancing was started in New York, the East Coast, with the B-Boys. And they had a certain style and certain flair to it. But when it came a couple of years later um, to the West Coast, we took it to a whole nother level. We we took it more to like a Cirque du Soleil, more aerials and uh, strength wow. movements um, uh, uh, style. And uh, oh so my. that really took off. Um, Pioneer of many things. And, yes. and I was, all, you know, I was always, I was a gymnast since I was six and, you know, martial arts and everything. So for me, it, it came very easy, you know, and it was music to movement, which, you know, um, transitions into the bodybuilding now is one of the reasons I like bodybuilding is the posing aspect of it, mm -hmm. um, you know, with, with the body and the connection with the music. It's those two things are so spiritual to me. I mean, it's like, I couldn't imagine listening to music without moving my body you know in some way you know and that's that's what we feel that's what connects with all cultures and civilizations for thousands of years in the human in the human race and mm -hmm. uh so i feel it and some people feel it more strong than others and um that really connected with me and i was very fortunate to be at the right time and at the right place because um the west coast uh my crew the people i dance with were some of the best dancers in the world um and so we helped pioneer a lot of the movements and stuff that you even see till today you know i would mm. i would get together with some real young guys that are doing it um because i work with the jabberwockies i've trained the jabberwockies they're friends of mine ah, and, cool. uh, they, they perform out of uh out of vegas you know they won the america's uh, best dance crew uh, uh quite a few years back you dance with them uh, oh yeah, dance and training them as far as their strength training because their manager, their manager Casey, uh, um, called me up and uh, he was like, you know, we just got this gig in Vegas and these guys are all young and it's been a you know a few months since we've been performing in Vegas and all of them moved to Vegas and this lifestyle is killing them because they're going out after every you know they're performing like four or five times a week. And uh, towards the end of the week, they're getting tired and they're starting to let their, their flips and everything else is getting very dangerous because they're not completing it mm -hmm. or looking sloppy. So, mm -hmm. you know, he had he had the huge screen TV um, 
back in the green room where they warm up before they go on stage. And he had the uh, the TRX, P90, <laughs> P90X or something like that. And so they yeah, were all yeah. trying to do it, you know, but they got real bored of that quick. And then, uh, you know, he invited me out there. So I started training them since I knew how to dance. Uh -huh. You know, I, I pioneered the stuff that they are doing right now. Uh, at least my generation did and my crew. And uh, so it was interesting to see the names of certain things. You know, they just changed the names and I would give them the origins of where it came from. Oh, you know, like my move God. Where, or so you would cool. spin like on uh, one hand, you know, um, up, you know, straight up in the air, like a head spin, but a hand spin. Mm -hmm. You know, we used to call that was a more advanced move at the time that I was doing. And it was called the 99 um, because it was 1999 was like the next, you know, like Y2K yeah. move. And uh, that was like in the early mid eighties, you know, that we were doing that movie, we called it the 99 and, uh, and they, uh, they didn't know why it was called that, you know? And so I explained uh -huh. it to them and they were just like, Whoa, cool. And then, uh, <laughs> so even fun. moves like uh, just uh, how you see in a lot of dance videos and stuff, they'll go from stand up and then they'll go and go on one hand and their, their legs will kind of go at an angle and just hold it and freeze and mm -hmm. then come back and stand up. We took that from the skateboarders when they used to go off the lip of, of skateboarding. And oh, they yeah. Put their hand and they would hold it and then go back down on the ramp. And that's where we Can got that from. Can you still do some of that? What's that? Can you still do some of that stuff? Oh, I could. I could if, if I, you know, stretched, warmed up. And warmed up. Body, Can you body teach mechanics. it to me, Monica? <laughs> sure. Yeah. I we'll do some, we'll do some online courses or online training with Danny Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> we well, should do that for a show one time and see how many people join. <laughs> yeah, that would be cool. Um, I've had <laughs> to lose so awesome. a little weight, you know. My body dynamics is a little bit different as far as the connection. I have to kind of recalibrate everything because, you know, when you're bigger and heavier compared to when you're a lighter, it's, it's mm -hmm. different. You know, your mind, you can do it, but your body mind connection just like in lifting it, ha it has to kind of get acclimated to it after you do it a few times and you get it yeah you know? well i and i understand uh, that from gymnastics and the fitness yeah. competitions from the back in the yeah, day it was yeah, like exactly. yeah if i took if i took this so we all get it yeah, if yeah we, you, well yeah you, you too right like if you take did a lot of that i remember i remember when you guys came on to the scene um, because when I competed, there's only women's bodybuilding and men's bodybuilding. There was nothing else. Fitness and then uh, with uh, Lou Zewick, a good friend of mine, um, kind of seen me at a competition and took me under his wing. And I mean, he he was really a blessing at the time for me, um, as far as just giving me the exposure. You know, on his on his show, American Muscle Magazine, I was always on there. I hosted a couple of the shows, and uh, he kind of started the women's um, um, fitness. You know. And then, the, of course, the IFBB uh, picked up on it. And then after the IFBB, it was, uh, you know, Paul DeLette's, a good friend of mine, Paul mm -hmm. DeLette's uh, yep. Federation, WBBF. WBFF, world's uh -huh. best friend forever. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and uh, they, I really like the way they, they did it, too. I mean, their production quality, Paul's, mm -hmm. is, is just amazing, you know. Yeah. And uh, yeah. It, it, it really gives a whole... I think the more the better, you know. Um, it's it's unfortunate a lot of these these uh, federations are kind of competitive with each other, mm -hmm. and uh, you know because there's so many good athletes in all of them, unbelievable, yeah. you know. Yeah. And uh, I, I think that WBFF uh, federation, um, their athletes are very strong on social media. You see a lot of those athletes. Right. Yeah. You know, know now that. now the IFBB is coming strong too. You know, but they're they were a little bit behind. Now, now a lot of the athletes from the IFBB um, is coming strong, which only helps the federation. And, that might be. You know. I think that's one of the reasons they added the um, wellness division because the WBFF athletes, that type of mm -hmm. physique. You know, they were they wanted to bring some of that into the IFBB. That might be part of yeah. the, you know, drive for add that extra. Oh, division. of course it is. I mean, it's you know everybody borrows from everybody else. I think the classic division. Um, in a way came from they had i guess like a division there that some of my friends were in before the ifpb had the classic division they had uh it was called the muscle body muscle they had like muscle that. model because i yeah because i did the yes. show twice up there i won in 2010 and 2013 yeah. so i was involved but um yeah it was i think they had, they had bodybuilding i want to say model and muscle model muscle model 
Yeah, mm-hmm. they they actually have That's... the like the shorts kind of about the size of the original classic physique. Um, right. Shorts when we first started. Now the classic physique shorts are a little bit tapered up higher, um, like the old school, um, but not quite as much as the the bodybuilder open bodybuilders now. So, okay. you know, it's always transitioning and growing. They, they gave us a little bit more weight, I think five or 10 pounds since I won it last. Um, and it's good. It's all good. You know, I, I just, I want to just make sure that uh, it's all in to the benefit and health of the athletes. I think whatever rule changes has to be not, not for the, the look first of what the audience wants, but for the benefit of the health of the, the athletes. Then I'm all for it. I love it. Just comes from that. I love it. So, Danny, we're going to um, go to a, the rapid fire questionnaire part of the show, which means I have, I have 10 fun questions for you. And you, I know you don't know what the questions are going to be all fun. I promise nothing hard, nothing you can't answer and, and all fun. So uh, you guys viewing, these are fun questions that Danny has not heard of yet. So we're going to ask, I'm going to ask you, they are supposed to be rapid fire. So I'm going to ask you as fast as I can ask you, just whatever comes to mind, say that after rapid fire, um, Wendy, if you want to be looking to see if we have any comments that we want to get back on before we go to a very short break, and then we'll come back with Danny because we have a lot more to talk about for the last half of the show. So Danny, you ready for rapid fire? (laughs) Oh, we've got the puppy dog. (laughs) This is rock star. Rockstar. Hey, Rockstar's part of the questions. Okay. Yeah, Dan- I know. Like, does he know about his questions already? Yeah, he and I what? talked earlier. Okay. You're All nice. right, Danny, you ready for rapid fire questions? Yeah. Okay. Right. What is one thing that everyone looks funny doing? Is this first supposed thing- to be fast? Yeah, oh. first thing that comes to mind. Going to the bathroom? <laughs> all right if you had to choose one animal to help you win a fight which animal would you choose be rock star <laughs> oh, <laughs> to win a fight huh? yes he looks pretty ferocious name one thing monique does that helps you be the best version of you she prays for me I love it. I knew that was going to be your answer, too, just so you know. Uh-uh. Name, uh-huh. Name three things you could buy together at the grocery store to make the cashier laugh. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm trying to be appropriate. So just to- it, whatever's on your mind. Three things. Hey, we're all oh, adults. Fire. Three things that you buy together that you knew would make the cashier raise her eyebrows and laugh. Uh, whipped cream. <laughs> Probably chocolate and strawberries. <laughs> okay, that's the good version. Okay, name your favorite glute exercise because me and Wendy are dying to know. Uh, favorite glute exercise would probably... Goodness. Probably like a sumo squat, really wide stance sumo squat. Okay, I'll be doing those all day tomorrow. Okay, so all the time. Yep, yep. Okay, so Rockstar knows this next question is about him, so getting excited here. If Rockstar could tell you one bit of advice, what would it be? It would be stop, stop procrastinating. This is his mom. This is Lola. <laughs> Oh, Hi, Lola. <laughs> I have a, I have a wiener dog too, just so you know. Mine's in her bed next to me. All yeah, right, stop procrastinating. Yet. How you're not yeah. a procrastinator though. I mean, look how much you've gotten done. Okay. I know. Okay. Look how much I could get done if I didn't procrastinate. I you know what it is? I don't know. Maybe it's I'm a adrenaline junkie, but I almost procrastinate because I work really, really well under pressure. And sometimes when I have too long of time, oh my God. I let it slip by and it's like rush, okay. rush. And, it, and Monique's the opposite. My wife, she she's like, she needs to plan. She needs to have time. And she really stresses. But she's finding out with me that I'm, I'm kind of breaking her of that because for whatever reason, so far, so good. I've, I've made it happen. I mean. So I see why you know, the long time between when I asked you about doing the show oh and actually God. pulling yeah. it together. Right. Now yeah. I get the Danny Hester. Okay, least favorite household man duty. Uh, just one. 
Just one. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> this is your show, Danny. If you want to talk about a bunch, we could take time for that. Uh, this is your show. This is your. Sh- if you need to vent, go for it now. The least favorite household oh, man. Um, least favorite. Okay. <laughs> Dishes. I guess. Dishes? Okay, that's fine. Is that a man duty? Oh, it's not a man duty. No. Oh, a man. Ah! Duty? <laughs> uh, well, Monique, you've got the man dishes are man duty all day long. You can come back here and go back and record and no, hit hit uh, the reverse. It's my man duty. duty. But Danny oh, said it was. Goodness, carry heavy stuff up the stairs. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> That's a man duty. <laughs> I don't know. I tell you, this is this is for like show. It's not to be used all the time. Uh, you know, there. I can't think of one right now, but I know that there's some times that I've asked my husband to do something, and he's like, ah, and he rolls his eyes. He does it, but, it, you know, you can tell he's not real excited about it. Okay, it, if you could relive one show, either as it happened or could change it, which show would it be? Huh? What show is... Okay, you've competed in... No, oh, sorry, your competition. Sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, like I mean, how many sh- how many competitions have you done, Danny? You oh, think God. over a hundred? Okay, is there one that you could go back to and say it was so fun? I'd like to relive it just as it was, or it kind of didn't go as you wanted, and you'd like to edit it and have it over. Which which show would that be? Either one. Uh, the one probably when I when I won the Olympia. Okay. You know. I yeah. think the main the, the 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 story with that is, uh, out of the thirty years of competing, my you know, I my mom never went to a bodybuilding show, and it's because I never really asked her to. You know, I always felt like, oh, what if I lose or whatever. You know, so it was always she loved seeing the pictures afterwards and stuff, and you know, seeing the trophies that I would bring back. And it was it wasn't until uh, I came out of retirement and I qualified for Olympia that it was the Olympia was in Vegas, and and she loves. Las Vegas, you know, older people like the buffets and the slot machines. So she's like, all right, I'm going. So you are so it. positive because a lot of people would have taken that question and they would have talked about something they would want to do over to do it Improved. better. But you went straight to wanting to do something that you enjoyed over. That's like a true, yeah. like, yeah. positive from the soul person. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, my, my mom never went to a competition before. And the first one she went to was the Olympia. She <laughs> sat, you know, pretty much front row with my wife. Oh, and uh, I so won. Fun. And, you know, when I looked down, I saw her and my wife crying. And your wife like, is oh. helping you with one of your questions, by the way. She said you hate taking out the trash. There you go. <laughs> the <laughs> trash. Out the trap. Well, yeah. oh, he even, see, he hated it so much he's forgotten about it <laughs> until yeah. it has to go again. Denial. Okay, I'm we've denial. got two questions left. Wendy, are you checking to see if there's any comments before we go to break? And the last two questions. Danny, describe yourself as a teenager in three words. Oh. Know it all. Is that three words? That's three words. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's perfect. Okay, and the last yeah. question. If Gold's Gym, the Mecca, closed for good, where would you train and would you shed a tear? Um, I, I wouldn't shed a tear necessarily. I think, you know, sometimes it, it it's a passing and it was an honor to be part of it. So I don't think at this point on I would get any more out of it, to be honest with you, um, mm-hmm. other than seeing, having people, uh, the younger people and, you know, tourists and stuff see it. But it's still not the same as, as like, you know, I, I think the golden era, too, with when we were around Monica, yeah. Yeah. you know, it's changed. And so so yeah. I wouldn't really cry too much. I just I just think uh, let's start a new one somewhere else, you know, cool. start it for the new generation. You know, I, I think I do miss those good old days when the owners were there and you could go in yeah. and talk to them in their office. And it was just such a different world back then for yeah. the bodybuilding community and fans would come in and it was just a really, you know, it was just different. So, and it was really yeah. geared towards um, so celebrating the bodybuilding and, and of course the new fitness community. Cause I got out there in 95 and really was yeah. fitness was just taking off. So yeah, I got yeah. out there, uh, Actually, in '89, um, and Ed Connors gave me a VIP membership, mm-hmm. and I've always had one ever since to this day. 
mm-hmm. you know, which is really cool. Yeah, I don't know how I managed that. You know, I think maybe just buttering up all the new managers or something. I remember Mike, awesome. <laughs> like like Mike and Mike Ryan. <laughs> Mike never really yes. liked me, but he put he was, up with me because I was always, you know, making him laugh or doing something sort of crazy. Yeah, you know, so yep. <laughs> it was like that. So it's like, okay, who's the new general manager now? Okay, what's yeah. he about? You know, I had a I had a Gold Gym VIP membership, the little black hard card, like a uh-huh. credit card. I had, I had that, that yeah. from '95 all the way up to I think two years ago and then my my connects at gold's gym corporate are not there anymore so it was like well they changed everything up and they're like yeah. we're not doing those vip memberships like that anymore but that was 20 almost 30 years so it was pretty good pretty yeah. good run with it but it was fun i uh, had but a very wealthy you in. what i said i'll sneak you in you'll sneak me one <laughs> awesome thank you yeah do you know josh fugly he's here in san antonio how yeah, Josh, yeah. I, Josh. I haven't awesome. seen him in a while, but he's here in town. I, I'm assuming he's still here anyways. The Gold's yeah. Gym next to me, I'm not really excited about, so I, I just didn't really want to even go back there, well, and, and there's not well, one. This Gold's Venice just sold out in bankruptcy court. Oh, uh, wow. A, a German company. Yeah, okay. just like last not month. All, not every gym is created equally. You have to find the one that you feel that vibe, you know? Everyone yeah. has... Yeah. a vibe that makes them feel good when they're working out and it makes a difference it certainly yeah, no, does it, it does and it's you know if you stay at a gym long enough you'll you'll be part of that vibe so you can help kind of create it to a certain degree too you know yep. there's there's been times in and out where i didn't like the vibes of gold's venice and then after a while you know it changes i think you know? for me here at the gold's near me it just everyone got so young and everyone's on their phones and, you know, they're a bunch of wannabe kind of pumped up yeah. guys and they're all on their phones. And I just, it, I wasn't inspired to go in there anymore. So anyways, um, we've got to go to a short break and I know we can, the three of us can sit here and chit chat, but I want to come back after the break. Wendy, did there any um, comments we want to address before we go to break? Uh, and Juarez wants to say hello to you. Uh, they're in their car waiting for Sophia at gymnastics. And uh, who uh, was that? I'm sorry, who was it? Ruben. Uh, Ruben, oh, Ruben. Hi, Ruben. <laughs> and uh, cool. MG Jones says uh, 1999 Fitness O for Mo because she should have won. Aww. Um, and then Ruben <laughs> said, I agree, MJ. Um, so John Butler says to Danny that competition makes people push themselves to be better, competition is healthy, makes people step up their game. Uh, obviously Danny feels that way because he's been at it for what, 30 years. <laughs> yeah, my, motto, my motto is competition should refine you, but it should never define you. I love so that. You said when I asked you, when you, someone asked you, when was your best look? And then what did you tell them? Uh, maybe in about two years. Ah, I love it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Danny, repeat that for everybody. Competition should what refine you, but not define you, but never define you. I like that. I'm writing it down so I can quote you. Yeah, people let you know how they place almost dictate, you know, their the the, how they feel about themselves, and I agree that should not be the case because you could be last place, and the next year you could be first place, and it doesn't, and and vice versa. Right. You know, I I have a short story when we come back. I'll tell you about being getting humbled and and actually appreciating the experience. I love it. I love it. Okay, we're going to go to short break, everybody. You guys don't go anywhere. Going right, coming right back with more from Danny and uh, take it away, Kona, please.
Tony Doherty here for NBC News Online with the first ever Classic Physique Division Olympia winner, Danny Hester. Danny, you've just made history. You won the first show of the year, being the first ever Classic Physique show, made history then, and you've come back here and won the Mr. Olympia. How are you feeling? I feel great. I feel great. It's amazing. I mean, I always knew I had the potential to do it. I'm just blessed that I had the mindset to do it now, yeah, to, to fall through and work hard. to the Monica Brandt show here. I'm Monica Brandt. I've got my beautiful co-host, Wendy Fortino. And we are speaking to the very, very first ever classic men's Olympia champion, Danny Hester. Workout after this with his energy drink. (laughs) Danny's drinking an energy drink. Uh, uh, uh. Awesome, awesome. Well, we're super excited, Danny, to have you in here. We've been having some great conversation and I believe we've got... A special another human coming in. I know your pups are with you now, but I believe we're bringing in Monique. Where is Monique? There she is. Hello, hello, darling. So you guys joining or are joining us is Monique Hester. This is Danny's uh, beautiful wife and talented singer with uh, some amazing musical. Yeah. opportunities coming up. I'm not sure how much I can say, but it's so good to have you on too. <laughs> Thank you. So good awesome. to be here. I appreciate it. Cool, cool. We've got a we've got a little something for you guys. So little hang tight. Some, some, bring in something in. in all directions. Listen for chosen it will come in time I see the stars at night pointing me to the light and I am bathing all that lost my shadows my heart has heard the call I will embrace it all open the floodgates let the waters crack victory Wendy told me she had this video and I was like, we have to share it. And that is just 
Thank the music you. and the posing, Danny, you looked amazing. I love the flag. Your voice is oh, gorgeous. You. you guys, I mean, I when when I got to talk to Monique and I learned a little bit about you guys' um, beautiful relationship and who you all are, I just wanted to bring both of you in and just honor the both of you as a married couple. I'm going to start crying. I know. I know. I'm going to cry. You <laughs> made me cry. We, we need... We need more of you guys in the industry to continue to uplift the other relationships, the other couples, and to see that it can happen. People can stay together. Can, people can better one another. They can use their talents and gifts to build one another up and to support one another in all their endeavors. And I'm just, I love it. I'm so excited to have got to meet Monique as well. Danny, you've got a beautiful wife and I love her spirit. And I can see why you got why you love her too, <laughs> yeah. just from the little visit I had with her. And what language are you singing in there? Uh, actually, I am singing in my prayer language. Oh, oh. Wow, that is just Beautiful. amazing. A really difficult decision to make to even record that because that's one of my pop songs. But when I was in the studio, they're like, "Okay, you need a bridge now," and I just sat there and. Honestly, I had been praying and asking God, I was like, can I have permission to do something like this? Because, you know, that's a very private thing. And um, and he was like, do it, babe. You know, kind of, I was like, I told the producer, I'm like, can you open up a channel for me? He's like, sure. You know, because he's, he's also a believer. And that mm -hmm. is what just came out of me. Oh. It's wow. gorgeous. It's gorgeous. So, Danny, I want to hear from you how you met Monique and um, share a little bit about that. And then I want to talk to you about your upcoming. I know Wendy has some questions for you a little bit. Um, we do our, we are getting close to the end of the show. So um, just so we know, I want to make sure I'm, I'm uh, thoughtful of all of our times because I know everyone's got other things going on this evening. But maybe Danny, share, share a little bit about uh, how you met Monique and um, how long you guys have been married. And then... Um, I know Wendy wants to talk to you a little bit about the upcoming Olympia. So take it away. Yeah, it was, uh, I noticed this woman kept stalking me every time I would go to the gym. <laughs> and I was like, you know, I had to call the police. It got so bad. Um, I can the other way around, yeah. So <laughs> she got my, uh, my number through, uh, no, I'm just kidding. I stalked her. <laughs> I was the stalker. She Danny. put a restraining order out on me. Got to talk. And, uh, now well, we how, gotta, how, you're so funny. How long have y'all been married now, Danny? Yeah, you better get this right. I can't help you. I'm, I'm <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be texting. Uh, He's so funny. It has been since 2000. And... Almost 12, December of 2011, December 18th is when we got married. Ooh, great ah, dates. At gotcha. 2 o'clock. Good job. Oh, at 2 o'clock. He knew the timing. <laughs> but it was that not supposed to be at 2 o'clock. It was more like 4 o'clock because I wasn't ready yet. So. No, that's not true. He was amazing. That was the one day he was absolutely amazing time-wise. On he was, I felt like Rapunzel in the tower. He's like... You just go up in the bride room. They gave us this little bride room. He's like, you just go there. I'll take care of everything. And I, like, I was almost in shock. I was already nervous enough because it was my wedding day. But the fact that he was going to take care of everything and that I was just supposed to stay and relax someplace, that was like. <laughs> so, but he, he did. He, he just pulled it off and everything yeah. was amazing. Our what, what actually made it uh, really cool is. We, we, uh, we were, you know, it, it's having a wedding sometimes is, is, is very stressful. Um, because you know, you have to see who you're going to invite. You don't want to miss inviting anybody. We kept going back and forth. Do we want to have it in Vegas? Do we want to do it, you know, somewhere around here or, and we, we actually almost just went to the courthouse and just did it. And just like maybe thought about having a party later, you know, just so we can have it for ourselves and not have so much expectations. Mm -hmm. um, but then we decided, you know what? Let's let's start planning and doing it. Basically, we 
did we didn't hire a wedding planner or anything. We did everything. We went to downtown LA. We paid everything in cash. We didn't want anything on credit because we didn't want to have to stress after we were married, you know. Right. I wanted to be free and clear and 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 be within our means and be uh, thinking about the the celebration of our friends and not having to stress about stuff. So we actually had a really good experience. It was fun going shopping downtown LA garment yeah. district to buy all the different table things and the the So when you saw her know, walking down the aisle what were you thinking? Yeah. She was walking towards you. What was going through your mind? Um, because I didn't eat breakfast. And my blood sugar was really low. <laughs> yes. I went out, Danny. I went out with the night Danny. Before. No, I'm saying it was. It was like I was like fasted, and sometimes when you're fasted and you're nervous, you almost have a. You go into like a euphoria. So mm -hmm. when she was actually coming down the aisle, um, close to me fainting it was literally like it was like in a dream state like euphoria oh okay yeah it was the mu and with the music you know we played we played the music uh from the gladiators you know now we are free movie. it was just it was beautiful it really was oh that's so fun i can just visualize it too and i you know it's fun to hear it's always fun to hear the the guy's version of things and <laughs> it's really special how did you yeah. how did you ask Monique to marry you? Um, she was actually away, which gave us a lot of, you know, you know blood sugar time up. together. She was away in Nashville doing music and I was flying up there um every month just about for a few days. And um so I decided, you know what, when she's done with the music, um and she moves back here to LA because you know, she was living up there for a little over a year. I said, let's, I want to, I want to, you know, I want to marry her. And uh, so I thought of a way to ask her when she was in Nashville. And one of my favorite, you know, obviously, uh, like his grandfather, my one of my first dog's name was Elvis. I'm a big Elvis Presley fan. Okay. And I, since I was a kid, everything he did was cool from the way he dressed, his hair and, mm -hmm. you know, his swag um, and his music. Um, I really liked Elvis. And so in Tennessee where she was in Nashville um uh Grayson wasn't too far away right and so I thought you know what I want to go when I next time I said let's go you know visit some tourist attractions out there you know while she's out there when I was out there last uh, the next time I said let's let's go visit Elvis's uh Grayson to, you know his mansion and I planned to like take a tour of it and in his bedroom I was gonna kneel down and ask her to marry me oh my goodness would that be cool yeah, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, uh, the day we were gonna do it, the day we were gonna do it, they had the biggest flood ever in Nashville. I mean, in, in just in Tennessee, it was a crazy huge flood. Cars were like, oh, no. you know, water was covering them. And uh, for a couple of days, that happened. So that kind of screwed those plans up. And so, probably about ten minutes away where she lived, there was a zoo. And uh, and the zoo was open, and I said, you know what? What's the next best thing, if not equal to Elvis, that I love? It's animals. Right. Aww. So that's great. So <laughs> we went to the zoo, and uh -huh. we were walking around the zoo. She had no idea I was going to do this, and I had the ring with me. And I'm thinking, like, we go by the elephants, we go by all these. Different... <laughs> I'm thinking, okay, which animal deserves what? Which one do I like? <laughs> where I stop in front of them and do it, and yeah. I couldn't decide. And it was towards the end, and. Uh, you know, I was going to walk around some more to see, okay, which was the best spot, you know, what the animal was. And then uh, we're just kind of taking a little break. And then there's this huge field with like a bunch of holes in it. It, was, it didn't look like there was any animals or anything. But then there was like this glass thing underneath. And you can see like the caves, you know, <laughs> half half underground, um, the, the glass and half up you know, on top of the ground where the holes were. And then all of a sudden, as longer we're standing there, there was like a little tiny meerkat or you know coming oh, in the and there was like and one popped up and then another one popped up and another one and then there was like a hundred of them hundred oh. at us. hundred meerkats just staring staring at us you know as we we're standing there they're like are you gonna do it <laughs> and, and i was like you know what this is perfect these are my witnesses <laughs> and then so that's where I did it, in front of all the little meerkats. It was, it was cool. That is so cute. Yeah. Okay. And they're about the size of my puppy, so I was Yeah, like, hey, they're this, super cute. They're, they're, wasn't wasn't they're, there they're a representing, you know, they're representing yeah. puppies. Wasn't there a TV show about meerkats? Yes. 
Yeah. I think that's so, why they had that. Uh, and this is Dory. Hi, Dory's Dory. Rock star hey, Dory. Sister. And John Butler, I can't stop crying. They're they're making me emotional. It's so beautiful. No, it is what it is. <laughs> wiener dogs. So I love this is it. Like the mirror. Just imagine this thing. Look, a hundred of them looking at you while you're. Yes, exactly. So, Monique, yes. Monique, could you tell that was was Danny? Well, first of all, was Danny at all distracted? Like while y'all were walking around, could you tell that there was something on his mind and Danny, you didn't know what it was? He is so like. I always have that. Cool uh, as a cute <laughs> Always That's like why I look all the time. No, I'm serious. Nothing. And but I want to tell you something before we run out of time. Like that was so intriguing to me. Like so, real quick. When when Danny and I were dating, um, I was I was kind of in a spot where I was really I had really like come to had my come to Jesus moment. You know, people have like where I really like was like this with God. We were. It was me and God. I was single. I was just together with God, all this. And all of a sudden this man comes into my life, Danny, and I was literally going, okay, God, can I have permission? Can I have him? So Danny, little by little, was Uh-oh. Hang on a sec. We can't hear you. Hang on. Danny, are you moving stuff around? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm giving them treats, dog treats. <laughs> of course you are. <laughs> okay, Monique, you're, yeah. you said Danny came into your life and you asked God if you could yeah. date him or something? Yeah, I was like, can I talk to this guy? Because honestly, I was like, it was me and God. And that was it. I was not. And I was watching. God was like raising me up in my life. He was he was calling me into all these things he'd been teaching me. And that'll be a whole other discussion I'll have with you at some point. But um, so I meet Danny. And then he says to me one day, uh, yeah, um, I'm going to go. I like to go to this place and, you know, get something to eat after the gym. You know, you, you want to go? You know, like not asking me out on a date, really. Yeah. And I was like, sure. You know, and I and everything because God had given me permission. No, I said, you, you, you well, can go with me if you want. I didn't ask. Yeah. <laughs> you can go with me if you want. Yeah. Like, I, it was okay that I talked to him, but mm -hmm. Danny and I. I what I, my point is in this is he and I really were friends first before anything else i i was he, he actually his ideas were so progressive compared to mine i was raised so conservatively that he freaked me out the stuff that would come out of his mouth because mm -hmm. on the one it was really intelligent and deep and on the other it was so progressive for how i was raised yeah that I was taught to sort of back away from people that spoke like he did. Mm -hmm. And, and so as I got to know him and then we started hanging out a little bit more, um, at a certain point I got, I had the opportunity to travel with my dad and Danny was kind of courting me the whole time I was in China. And so he'd call me on opposite schedules. And when, when I got back from China, even though my heart was like starting to really fall for him, I was like, I came back. He was all thinking we were going to start dating, like to be together. And I told him, halt, I, I have to stop. It's too heavy for me. It's too much like dating. It's too, we're spending too much time together kind of thing. And then he got upset with me, but at the same time, he handled it very graciously and it kind of blew my mind. He wasn't a jerk. He wasn't, he was very much like, and if I, and Danny's, I'm looking at his face. I'm maybe I'm messing up the, the time frame of this, but there was a time when I, and so, so basically he, he was gracious and I made him wait and, and, and so fast forward to when he proposed to me, you know, obviously eventually we got back to we got together and we were dating and we've been dating ever since like September of, I think, oh, six, we were together. But when he proposed to me that day, he said to me something that was so intriguing. So in that moment of us dating and he was very gracious, I grew, I began to grew to respect this man. And I was like, oh my gosh, I that nobody ever spoke to me in that way. You know, like guys sometimes can really be jerky when you're speaking your heart to them and right. he wasn't. And he allowed me to just be in the space I need to be in. So then when he proposed to me, he said to me, you know, asked me to marry him and all that. And he goes, now, before you answer, I want you to think about it. <laughs> Aww. 
And I was like, I almost fell over because here I'm, I'm dating this man for almost, I don't know, five years. And I'm like, think about it. I don't have to think about it. I've known for, I knew, I knew so quick in our uh -huh. relationship. And I know now that uh -huh. Danny was trying so hard. He really wanted to be prepared to take on the responsibility of marriage and being a husband and all these things. And I found that out later, but then, um, he asked me, he told me, just wait before you tell me. And I found out later the reason. And I, and I did, I waited because I, I respected him and I thought, okay, he hasn't steered me wrong before. I'll, I'll wait. And I prayed and I was like, God, why is he telling me to wait? Is this cool and everything? I was like, all right, I'll find, I'll, I'll wait. And then I was like, it gave me a moment to think about it. It gave me a little bit of time and it gave me a time to like really like pray about it and ask God and go like, you know what? I really want your blessing. This is going to be forever. Mm -hmm. Let me know and stuff. So obviously I, I said, yes, we're married now. And I asked him soon after, you know, uh, I told him, yes. I said, so why did you say that? And he said to me, one of the coolest things that any guy has ever said to me he goes well when I asked you it was a very big question and I wanted you to have an opportunity to feel empowered in the decision that you were making about your the rest of your life wow and I was just like that's amazing Danny you are you operate on such a high level in everything that you do mm -hmm. really put a lot of thought into everything he does but he's Super deep, you guys. Wow. Well, that is, I love well, that. thank you. You know what, Monique, that, that this is a very special story and it's really endearing to hear. And, you know, Danny, I appreciate you uh, letting us know your heart a little bit because um, it's always fun to get to know someone a little bit deeper and, and not just, you know, who they are on the, on the surface, but who's inside. So thank you, Monique, for sharing that is really special and it just goes to show you know danny really honored and respected his mother so i i when you're sharing this story it reminds me the the story that you always hear as a young girl wendy maybe you've heard it too but it was always like hey check out how the the, the guy treats his mother because a lot of times that's how they're going to treat their wife yeah. and i have heard yeah, that I so many that to her a lot <laughs> <laughs> so I, you know, yeah, me too. <laughs> but you know, the funny thing is, as a girl, you hear that, and then the other thing my dad would say is well, to my brother, he'd be like, "Well, you know, check out and see how how fit and pretty the wife of the mother looks, and that's what your wife's gonna look like." You know, so so it's all. It was like, why is it all deep and everything for the girl and for the guy? It's like all surface level <laughs> stuff. But it's kind of. Kind of as I'm talking about it, thinking about that. And one last thing about Dad, the wedding. You're more shallow. <laughs> you're more shallow. Uh, well, you're apparently not completely. One of the last things when you said, you know, you were content contemplating like who to invite for the wedding and who's going to, you know, don't want to forget anyone. It reminds me of tagging people in social media now. It's almost like it's like. Yeah. Who did I forget oh, to tag? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we just have a couple minutes, you guys. And Wendy, I, I know that uh, you and Danny are both getting ready for the upcoming Olympia in Vegas. Yeah. Uh, but a new location. So let's talk maybe yeah. two, two minutes about that because I really I want to respect everybody's time. Yeah. So, um, well, you know, Danny, you have a little bit of more information than most people. You talk directly to the new owner of the Olympia. And so if you could just give some of our viewers who would love to know a little bit of insight on the, the direction of the, the Olympia. Some of the athletes that I know of are a little bit nervous about what's going to happen with the Olympia now that Wings of Strength took it over right before the pandemic. So just give us a little bit of your wisdom on what is going on with the Olympia. Um, to be honest, you know, this COVID thing, no one could be really sure about anything, you know. Right. Um, no matter how you plan. And uh, given that, it's, it's the, the plan is to, it's going to be in Planet Hollywood, which mm -hmm. is a, an amazing venue, because their theater they have there is, is a theater. Mm -hmm. um, the Olympia before, um, for the last, I don't know, 10 years or so, um, was the arena. Right. The arenas aren't conducive to performing in a theatrical 
I guess, you know, environment, which bodybuilding and fitness is made for, you know, to really just focus on the lighting and everything. Because a lot of complaints I had and other people had before prior was, was the lighting wasn't that great. Um, not for bodybuilding, you know, because the arena is made for boxing and bigger events like that, um, basketball or, you know, whatever. And, uh, and, uh, the theater is made, made, I mean, at least when I started, you know, on Arnold's day and everything, it was about the theater is more of every, all the focus is right there onto the theater. Yeah. You know, the seating is built for it. It wasn't, you know, just t- trying to build seats just to fill the people in like the arena where you're sitting off to the sides and it's, you know, supposed to be good seats and it's probably the worst seat. And uh, so the theater has been planned out for the spectator in that spot to focus on the theater. So, and the lighting and everything too, and the backstage, you know, so I'm, I'm excited about that. There's not going to be an expo, unfortunately. And that was one of the biggest things that I liked about um, going because you get to meet and greet, you know, the fans and everybody in the industry Mm -hmm. is almost like a, like a Christmas time for family. You get to see Mm -hmm. all your family members, you know, at Thanksgiving, they're all doing their thing and they all come together, Mm -hmm. um, you know, at one period. So that was kind of nice because you know, and, and then also the, I think the seating might be limited, you mm-hmm. know, because of, of the social distancing. I can't imagine them filling the stadiums. Um, at least I know Vegas won't let them. So, mm-hmm. cause I know they've had a few shows that were supposed to be in Vegas and California and even New York, you know, the, the Tampa, uh, the New York pro is in Tampa next this weekend, which I'm going to. Okay. So, wow. um, you know the new york pro in tampa (laughs) yeah Yeah. the new york pro is in the tampa because you know the COVID hit new york pretty hard right they're very strict there right and so they're moving it to tampa because uh florida's a little bit more uh you know loose over there um not as strict Mm -hmm. and uh so they're having the new york pro this weekend in tampa and it's going to be I think a lot better than if it was all the restrictions that they would have on them having it in New York. And so the Olympia, you know, we still have a few months to go, so we'll see, but it's going to be limited, you know, family members and friends as far as for the tickets um, in the audience. And uh, hopefully we won't have to be wearing a mask on stage because I've seen some competitions online. Mm -hmm. Um, They're wearing masks on stage. That just, I don't know. I mean, it, it could be a good thing. If I'm out of shape, you can't see I'm breathing hard in my face. Is, <laughs> Except your belly will be going. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, I learned how to breathe through my chest. But, you know, the shallow you know, like, breathing. Yeah. The look of pain on your face when you're not in condition kind of gets covered. <laughs> a bit, you're going to be in condition. Yeah. Don't give us that. Hey, Danny, here's here's for your puppies. Here's my oh. little wiener dog. Oh my gosh. She's Aww. she's she's 14 so and a half. Oh, she's she's traveled all she's over with me. She's, she's a good girl. 13. Oh, hi there. Years old. You guys are she making has me blue laugh. eyes. I don't know if you can see your eyes. <laughs> oh, blue. All the dogs. All right, you guys. So Olympia's the week before Christmas. And yeah, people can get tickets. Christmas. How can people get two weeks or one week? It's uh, the I believe the eighteenth. So that's uh, December eighteenth. That's the week, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Before, um, so how can you know Phil Hill, Phil Heath is coming back? Okay. Um, he took a couple of years off, and uh, he wants his title back. And it's actually the 18th, where they have prejudging. It's his birthday. Ah, oh, cool. Very cool. And, I'd like and, to. I'd like to get Phil on the show too here. Yeah, and if like he an wins, Mr. He'll actually, birthday present. Yeah, right. if he wins, he'll actually tie Ronnie Coleman and and, uh, and Lee Haney's record eight times. Ah, that's that cool. That would be a great cool. birthday present, huh? Yes, yes, yes. I had I had Ronnie on my very first show. I've got Lee coming up in the future here, and uh, looking forward to awesome. getting it. And Dorian too. Dorian's supposed to be on uh, in um, yeah. November, I think, or December. So, yeah. Yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool. Well, Danny and Monique, it's been such a pleasure to talk to you guys. And can I just ask, is there anything you would like to share with your fans, your viewers? And maybe, Monique, if you don't mind, or Danny, whoever wants to say the um, website, social media, wherever people can come find you guys. And and if there's a booking, like somebody wants to hire you for posing or a seminar or for you guys to come sing and pose, however, how do people get hold of you guys for booking? Maybe just share those things. Um, Take it away. 
I guess at Danny Hester's on my Instagram, and you can DM me. You know? Oh, I know how that goes. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then uh, Monique's voice. Yeah, at Monique. Get a hold of my wife. That way, you'll, I'll, she'll definitely get back to you. Yeah. At Monique voice. <laughs> well, now me and Monique are connected. I'm good now, Danny. I got, I got. You. Voice. Well, then you know what? They can actually, you guys, contact Monica Brandt. There you go, and I can put you guys in touch. <laughs> Monica's our agent. Yeah. Thanks, ten percent, Kat. See, that's just the procrastination coming out, Danny. I know. Yeah. Trying to. Yeah trying to break him of that though but it's all good it's all good it's so much fun to talk to you guys okay so instagram's the best route because your email's there and monique you're on instagram so and then of course i think you both get the same emails so if someone emails you guys then they can hire you up and come cheer you on at the olympia and yeah. danny monique thank you so much for taking time tonight it's oh, been my email is uh what did I say my email was? I don't really remember. <laughs> it's it's first, first Classic it? Mr. Olympia at yeah. Gmail. And that's yeah. one ST. First Classic, classic Mr. Olympia. Mr. Olympia. And if y'all forget you need Danny, just DM me and I'll send you his email. <laughs> I see the email. <laughs> Thank you. If you need to reach Danny, then, yeah. you know, I'll make sure. <laughs> So I just want to say thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. You guys have been uh, amazing, Danny. It's fun to learn more about your past and, you know, just learn about dancing and where you're from and your puppies are super cute. So thank you for sharing all of that. And I'm so excited for you guys. And I'm blessed to know you you both, Danny, you better and, and Monique to get to meet you. So thank you guys so very much. Um, we are going to let you guys go and play with the dogs. <laughs> Bye, baby girl. Wendy, you and I will close out the show. So thank you so much, you guys. Big be, hug. Thank you so much for having us on. Thank you. Thank You're you, so Monica. You you guys. Thanks, Wendy. Bye, you guys. You're so <laughs> welcome. Bye, you guys. All right. So that was awesome. Wendy, thank you so much for joining me tonight and getting to talk to them. What a special couple. Of course, I know. I had to be told not to cry because I was getting. <laughs> I know, I got a little choked up too. It's really special. And, you know, we're both married girls, so it's wonderful to see other couples and it's inspiring. I know for me and, um, and my own marriage, and I'm sure for you guys too. And it's really special. So it was great to see you tonight. You, and I know. Yeah. Uh, you're welcome. And you're are prep- you going? Are you going to the Olympia? Do you think you're going to go? Well, if uh, I've talked to Sean Ray and um, Dan Solomon, show. I'm so well, I have. Well, maybe you can talk to him. I've talked to both. They've both yeah. been on my. Dan Solomon's been on my show, and Sean's been on the show. And I've. It's uh, It's just about me getting over to there, and I'd love to meet Jake Woods. So if you want to connect he's to the old, nicest old, guy, and I, I guarantee he's a fan of yours because he loves women's fitness and bodybuilding. I want to, if you want to connect me with Jake. Yeah, I'm really good friends with Sean Ray, so definitely I'll be talking to him about that. Yeah, I would love to be on this show. I would love to do something at the Olympia, and I offered to come and do any commentating or whatever, so that would be really super fun. Yeah, Yeah. I just need to, and everyone, apparently it's like up to Jake Woods is what everyone has said, so maybe you can talk to him. Yeah, I have his private number. I will tell Jake. You will tell Jake. I'll, I'll even bring my old Olympia medal and just wear it around, and that way people can't cool. get, say, "Oh yeah, you won." That's right. It's been so long. 1998. That's, that's how I am too. <laughs> Believe me, they forget me. It was just recently. They forget fast. These days. No one forgets either of you. You guys oh. are my icons. Okay, so I know oh, we said bye, you. but we did not get a winner for the second question. So I don't think anyone. I don't think anyone got the second question. What year did you win? What year uh, did you win, you guys? What okay. year? And you know what I think we're going to do is we're just going to send the goodies to Danny and Monique. And Danny, I don't know if All you right. can eat it, but... Uh, it you... not, it not... 2016 is when I won. That's right. He had, he had to think about it. Ever miss <laughs> Olympia title. Right. Okay. No, actually, it was I... 2020 when I won. <laughs> what the heck? Okay. Yep. We cannot Remember. say, I. you know what, here's the thing is, I'm really bad at saying goodbye, and I can tell all of us are really bad at saying goodbye. Uh, so, I am going to have you. to say goodbye because my husband and I want to go grab dinner before everything cl- closes, and we are uh, two hours ahead of you guys. 
So I'm going to have to say goodbye. Um, Monique, if you can get me your shipping address, that way I can get you guys the Legendary Foods giveaway. You guys are going to love it oh. from our sponsor. And um, you can have all the goodies yourself since no one else got yeah. the right answer. Awesome. All right. I'm going to say yeah. bye. Love to you guys. Bye, guys. We'll see you guys next week. Back here, same time, 7 p.m. Central. There's a big arm for us. Thank you, Danny. And there's another one. Woo! Monique. Bye, honey. Praying for you guys. Love to everybody. Take it away, Kona. <laughs>